Okay, so we're talking about synthetic, and this time we're talking a lot more about missing terms. That's like where here we have a five, here we have a three, but there's no x to the fourth term. So I put zero for that. So I'm going to put a one for this, a zero for the missing term, and then I'm going to put the negative 11. The one, zero, negative 11, don't interrupt, please. And five, eight, and negative 15. I had to throw in a missing term. Sometimes on today's homework, you'll have two missing terms. Big deal, throw in two zeros. All right, try this one, please. At the beginning here, you have to drop it like it's hot. And put the one here. And then you multiply. And then you add. Keep going from there. So we've got to the end here, and it's a zero. What's that mean? It worked. That's correct. Okay. So now, if this is working, what does that mean? If you just say yes, you do not get the point. You got to do the thingy, yes. You got to do this part where you say x minus 3 for that. And this part here, which is going to be kind of extensive, that's the x's, that's the x squareds, that's the x cubes, and that's the x to the fourths. And then I need something between each thing, and if I don't have a minus, I just put in a plus. There we go. There's my equation that would multiply out to make that. So what did I really do? I made two things that multiply. Those are called factors. So I factored it. Next one. Try this one. It's got missing terms. That's all I'm going to say. Do your best. Before you waste too much time, if you put a one in this little corner thing, you're doing it wrong. What do you put? Yeah, I just hate to have you do the whole prop wrong. All right, so we're going to start by putting out a 1, a 1, and a 1, and saying that's completely wrong. Why? 1, zero, zero, 1. Why do we have to have those zeros to hold places for the spots that were skipped? There were missing terms. Okay, now we drop this 1 down here, and then 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, and then add them, negative 1, multiply them, 1, add them, 1, multiply them, negative 1, add them, 1, multiply them, negative 1, add them, uh-oh. I went a little too fast there, huh? <sighs> oh, that's a zero. Okay. Zero times negative one is zero, and then it didn't work. Look at, huh? Look at that. Usually, if you mess up, it goes from working to not working. And in my case, I messed up just perfectly, so it actually worked. But anyway, one and zero makes a one. And then since it has a remainder, the bottom line is the answer is what? No, and you do not have to list the answer yet, but I want you to be smarter than the average kid, and I want you to understand something. If I were to drop this down and say x plus 1, and if I were to make this part right here be just like normal, that's the x's, that's the x squareds, that's the x cubes, did you know that if you multiplied this times this, and then added one, you'd get that. Isn't that kind of crazy? You would multiply this times this, just like normal, except I said it didn't work. It doesn't work because you need to add the remainder to make it work. Let me show you an example. Let's say I had two going into seven. Do you agree that two goes into seven? But not perfectly, right? So if I go two goes into seven three times makes six, and there's one left over, watch what happens. That times that doesn't make seven. But if I add that, it does. Do you get that? Same idea. I take this times this, and if I were to add that, it would equal that. Okay, just for fun, thought I'd show you that. Now, moving on. This one, number six on the green screen. Give it a shot. All by yourself. Pausing, yeah. Okay, so we're back, and here's what I wanted you to do. Is x equals 4 a solution? So you put in the 4. Remember, if they'd have said something like this, x plus 4 a factor, then we would have used negative 4. But since they said x equals 4, it's really 4. And then I'm going to put in 1 for this. Then there is a missing term. 
the x to the thirds are missing, so we're putting a zero for that. And then minus 13 x squared. And then there's a missing term there, too. So I'm going to zero for that. And then a negative 48. How many have set it up right? Good. Moving on. Drop it like it's 1 times 4 is 4. Add them 4. Multiply them 16. Add them 3. Multiply them 12. Add them 12. Multiply them 48. Add them 0. It worked. Yay. Now remember, you can't just say yes, though. Yes is part of your answer. And then you would say, and here is what we factored it to. And that's the whole point. X minus 4. And then you put a parenthesis here. And remember that this here, that's just the constant. So you say positive x. That's an x. That's an x squared. That's an x cubed. Add, add. Now I'm done. Okay? Any questions about that? All right. You have learned to factor really impressive things you could not do, like, in a normal way. This would not be doable without synthetic. All right. So your homework for today is basically just to take the worksheet that we gave you yesterday and finish it. So there's uh, like six more questions, or maybe it's more like four more questions. There's not many. Okay. So one other thing, if you weren't, if you were saying just yes, and you weren't saying, and the factors are this, go back and fix yesterday's to have those. Okay. Because you need to not just say yes. You need to say like these factors here for your yes answers. Okay. That's all I got for you. Yeah. Okay, so I'm showing the kids Wolfram Alpha. Uh, go on your iPad, see if you have an app for that. I think you might. See if they got the app on there or not. Just do a search, W-O-L-F, and you'll know real quick whether it's there or not. Okay, then just go to the Internet and find on Safari and find Wolfram Alpha. you got to spell it out. And if I were you, I'd make a bookmark there because it's a really cool site. It's like Google except it's for math. So, for instance, let's say that you wanted to factor one that we were doing before. It's Wolfram Alpha. All right, so this one, for instance, we, it, we know it factors, right? X to the fourth minus 3X squared minus 48. I'll see if I can copy that right there. Copy. And then I'm going to see if I can paste it. There we go. Except it's not going to know that's x to the fourth. So I got to put in that little carrot thing. You know where that is on the. Looks like that. x to the fourth minus 13x to the second. And then I hit equals. And it says, oh, here's what the graph would look like. Here's what the graph would look like if you use a different scale. Here's what it factors to in one form. Here's what it would factor to like we usually would do. Here's a different way you could multiply, like stretch it out in vertex form, or close to vertex form. Here's the roots. Here's the imaginary roots. I mean, holy cow, it does everything for you. So it's kind of a cool thing in that they don't know exactly what you want to know about this equation. So they just tell you everything they know about it. I remember a really smart kid who told me that he had used this website, and he was just amazed at how fast the, the really smart guys would figure out the answer and, like, put it up for you. His, 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 what he imagined was that you type this in, and some really smart guys in a back room, like, actually graphed it and, like, figured out the, um, the other forms of it, and then they put them up and like, like put them up for you and uh, this is all done with the computer but the computer is pretty darn smart it like, takes this and does a whole bunch of different questions and answers them uh it, it can do other things like anything math related like for instance we can ask it what's the population of china It won't tell you your lacrosse count. Lacrosse count. 1.35 billion people. And then they're like, hey, would you like to see China's gra graph of their population going up since 1970? 
Maybe apple stock. Here's apple stock. Here's its turrets. Okay, that's an advertisement. Anyway, um, here's its PE ratio is 12.06. That means profit to earnings ratio. That's really important for people to follow stock. Here's its price history over last year. Let's go to last 10 years and see what Apple stock has done over the last 10 years. Wouldn't you like to have bought it there in 2004? I think for, a, I know I owned it at 22. So um, here, minimum was back in 2003. It hit $6.56. Okay, so that's it for today. Just wanted to show you Wolfram Alpha and how you can factor things using Wolfram Alpha and also get all kinds of information. Population of China, the stock price of Google, almost anything. It's like the Wolfram Alpha is like the Google of math.